In this video, we'll learn to order positive and negative fractions. We'll start with the positive ones and then we'll move to the negative ones as well. So when we have fractions, which are quite simple and straightforward, and they have the same bottom number, the same denominator, that is a bit more straightforward. So if I have one quarter and three quarters, it's very clear that the three quarters is larger than the one quarter. So same slices, we're just taking more slices in this case. But if we have a different denominator, that can be a bit more complicated. So we'll have a look at that now. I'm going to compare two thirds and four fifths. So two thirds, four fifths. I'm going to represent the two thirds like this. So I'm taking two out of the three and the four fifths like this. Okay, it does look like in my drawing that this is larger, but because I haven't measured these accurately, we're going to go through the working out as well. So these are different slices, so I can't really compare them. I need to have them in the same number or size of slices, I should say, that it's going to be easier for me to compare just like here. So I'm going to find a number that is going to be working for both of these, for the three and the five. So I'm going to find a multiple, a multiple of three. That is also a multiple of five. And that can be 15. So to make this into 15 slices, I'm going to cut each and every one of these inside into five. So that's what multiplying by five in this case means because inside each of these three we've got five slices now. So that has become 15. So how many am I taking? I'm taking two of these previous slices and they now have five into each of them. So that makes 10. So I'm multiplying both the top and the bottom number by the same number, by five in this case. Now I'm going to cut this into 15 slices as well because that's our common multiple or common denominator. So I've got five already, so that means I'm going to go and cut each of these into three slices. So that makes 15 in total. And as you can see, I've got one, two, three, four of the existing slices with three in each of them. That makes 12 now. So I multiplied the 5 by 3 to get 15. So I am multiplying the 4 by 3 to get 12. Now I can compare these two. Of course, 12 15s is larger than 10 15s. Let's compare another two fractions. So 3 fifths and 4 sixths. Let's find a um, common multiple for both of them. 
and that could be 30. So representing these first one three fifths so I'm going to split this into five equal parts and take three of them and split this into six equal parts and take four of them so to get from 5 to 30, that means we're going to split each of these inside into 6 so we've multiplied 5 by 6 to get 30 and we'll multiply it by 6 the top number as well and that is going to give us 18 so if you look at these 3 6 and 6 and 6 gives us 18 now to get from 6 to 30 we'd multiply by 5 so we'll split each of these into five equal slices so that is five and five and five and five that gives us 20. in other words we've multiplied four by five to give us 20. look at that we've multiplied the top and the bottom number both by the same number so both by six here by five both of them by five are we able to compare them then yes we are so 18 thirtieths is smaller than 20 thirtieths hopefully the visual representation here gives you an idea of what's happening so i'm gonna go away from the visual representation now and just try and do this without those so let's get five sevens and seven nines and let's compare them or order them in other words so we'll find a common multiple and that can be seven times nine which is 63 So to get from 7 to 63, we've multiplied by 9. So we'll do the same with the top number, the numerator. So that is 45. To get from 9 to 63, we've multiplied by 7. So we'll do the same to the top number as well. And that gives us... 49. Now they're quite easy to compare. 45 63s is smaller than 49 63s. Let's try now with three fractions. So let's say we've got four fifths, five sixths, and three quarters. And we need to order them from the smallest to the largest. There are different ways you could do this. You could get them all with a common denominator and then compare them. Or you could do them in two. So have a look at two of them, get the answer and then compare that with the other fraction. I think this second method is a bit easier. So I'm going to use that one. So having a look at these two, a common denominator for both of them would be 13. So, to get from 5 to 30, I've multiplied by 6. So, I'm going to multiply 4 by 6 as well. And that gives me 24. To get from
from 6 to 30 I've multiplied by 5 so I'm going to multiply the 5 by 5 as well and that gives me 25. So that is clear now that this is smaller than this. Now we need to see where this fits so I could compare it with this one or this one whichever so let's just compare it with this one a common denominator for both can be 12 so to get from 6 to 12 we multiply by 2 so I'm going to multiply the 5 by 2 as well and to get from 4 to 12, we multiplied by 3, so 3 times 3 is 9 as well. So I can see that 3 quarters is smaller than 5 6, but does that now go in the middle, in between 4 fifths and 5 6, or does it go before as being the smallest of them all? I can visualize this and I know definitely this is going to go there but if you are unsure then just compare this with that as well so common denominator is 20 so um, 5 times 4 gives us 20 4 times 4 is going to give us 16 5 times 4 gives us 20 so 5 times 3 is going to give us 15 so that proves that this is going to go first so we're going to have them as three quarters, four fifths and five sixths in order, from the smallest to the largest. What we're going to do now is to order some numbers which are top heavy. So having a number at the top which is larger than the number at the bottom. So a numerator being larger than the denominator so let's just do five quarters six fifths and four thirds now again we could find a common denominator for them three or we could just take them in turn and compare them. So I could compare these two first. Common denominator for them is 20. 4 times 5 gives us 20. So 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 4 gives us 20. So 6 times 4 is 24. So that tells me that this is smaller than this. So now I am going to decide where this goes. So I'm going to compare it with the five quarters. Common denominator is 12. So 4 times 3 gives us 12. 5 times 3 is going to give us 15. 3 times 4 gives us 12. 4 times 4 is going to give us 16. So that shows that this is larger than this. So this was the smallest, 6 fifths. And then we had this one, 5 quarters. And finally, 4 thirds. Now we're going to look at some negative fractions as well. So if we have negative two thirds and negative four fifths, we'd follow the same procedure as if we had no negative sign in front. Let's just compare them, finding a common denominator, so we can get 15 and 15, 
3 times 5 gives us 15, so 2 times 5 is going to give us 10. 5 times 3 gives us 15, so 4 times 3 is 12. So we can see this fraction has a larger value, but that is before we look at the negative sign. Because what we've said is that if the digit, or in this case the fraction, after the negative sign is larger, that means this number overall is smaller. So negative four fifths would come first if we put in them in order, starting with the smallest. If we have three fractions, some positive and some negative, let's say negative two thirds negative four fifths and positive three quarters. Now we're going to put them in order from the biggest to the smallest and we know that a positive one would be larger so three quarters would come first and then we just have to compare these two just like we have just done and we found out that this was larger so I'm going to put that here and then negative four fifths after.